All right, today we're finally moving out of the Adam and Eve story, and we're looking at their kids. The story of Cain and Abel, Genesis 4. Interpretation number one. It is an allegory on how agrarian trade has taken over the nomadic trade. What? Look at these occupations of these two gentlemen. Cain comes from a Hebrew word that refers to iron or copper, and he is described as being a man of the field. It might have to do with the idea of farming equipment. Abel is a shepherd, so he is nomadic. The author of Cain and Abel is the same author of Adam and Eve, the J. The J around 950 AD is already familiar that for the Israelites, they went from being a nomadic wandering people to a stationary people, an agrarian culture, when they settled in the land of Canaan. So, when Cain kills Abel, you can make the case that that's the farmer killing the shepherd. It's like the internet killing TV, or the MP3 player killing the Walkman. Or video killing the radio star! Or something like that. It's a commentary about changing society. Does that have anything to do with religion? Well, if so, then that means God favors the nomadic Israelites, not the agrarian Israelites. But let's move on to interpretation number two. Interpretation number two looks at the name Cain some more. Cain! Because around 950 AD, there was a tribe known as the Kenites spelled below here. Look at this word Kenite. C's and K's in ancient languages are interchangeable. When you're journeying through the Hebrew scriptures, you're going to encounter a lot of people. And a lot of times the names of these people ends with ites. I-T-E-S. I mean, Jacob is known as Israel. His descendants are the Israelites. Any of his tribes, you have the Danites and the Josephites and the Benjaminites. Of course, in the New Testament, you have the Levites. Well, what would the descendants of Cain be known as? The Cainites. And interpretation number two suggests that this story could serve as an ideology or origin story of the Cainite people. Now, you're going to get a lot of this in Genesis. Now, again, Genesis is the beginning, and it's trying to give you a lot of ideologies. And a lot of these ideologies are actually origin stories of competing or opposing tribes. Just wait till you get to the Moabites. <laughs> so the Israelites in 950 AD were familiar with the Canaanite people. Now, what were the Canaanites like? They were considered to be a rough bunch, kind of like the Klingons of Star Trek. I am Worf, son of Moog a nomadic wandering group. They were known for their use of metal, iron, and copper. They were also a tattooed race. Cain, after he, of course, you know, violently murders his brother, and then lies about it when he says, am I my brother's keeper? By the way, that's where we get that expression from. It's from, it's from Cain in Genesis 4. God banishes him. He banishes him from the family and says, you will forever now wander. Well, the Cainites were wanderers. And Cain says this is too much of a penalty, and God says, don't worry, I will put a mark of protection upon you. Now, there's no indicator on whether or not this mark is visible or invisible, but the Kenite people were a tattooed race. They were known by their tattoos, like the Klingons, and they were known for their, you know, their forehead bumps. Unless you're watching the original series. Those Klingons? They are Klingons, and it is a long story. And something else that the Kenites have in common with Cain is that the Kenites of 950 actually showed devotion to Yahweh. They worshipped the same God as the God of the Israelites, although they were not considered the people of God. Now this can tie back into Genesis 4, where Cain is still a descendant of Adam, who is the son of God, and God is still in a covenant with Cain. It's a different type of covenant, but he's in a covenant of protection. So that explains why the Canaanite people, although they were not God's chosen, they are not the Israelites, do show devotion and loyalty to the God that they know as Yahweh. Interesting story. We'll have more ideologies on the pagan or the Gentile tribes as we encounter them in Genesis. Uh, literally, I compare the ideology stories of, of competing tribes as like your mama so fat jokes. Your mama so fat.
She sat on a rainbow and made skittles. <laughs> Your mama's so fat, she died. <laughs> In the biblical times, it wasn't your mama so fat. It had to do with dissing the origin of your father. No wonder you're acting the way you are with a loony for a father. In this case, Cain was the great, great ancestor, the great father of the Cainites. You call my dad a loony again, and I'll kill you. Loony, loony, loony. Interpretation number three has to do with typology. Typology. Abel is a type of Jesus. They're both shepherds. They're innocently put to death. People are resentful. God had favor upon Abel with his sacrifice. Of course, Jesus also has a sacrifice that God favors. Abel was the second born. They're twins. Cain and Abel are twins, but Abel came out second. And you'll see, and this is the very beginning of this, you'll see a lot of this in the Hebrew scriptures where God favors the second born. Uh, in society, the second born is the least likely person that you'd expect when it comes to honor and fame. It's always first born, first born privileges. So Cain, you would think, is God's favored one. But God actually fables Abel, the second born. Jesus was not what the Jews expected. A Messiah to look like. But God continues to, to reach out to the least likely candidates. It gives hope for the underdogs. And that's what I typically call this. I refer to these as underdog stories. And this is the beginning of a long series of underdog stories. Underdog! Abel was an underdog who was innocently put to death. Is there more typology there? Probably. But let's move on. Interpretation number four. Sin is escalating. Now, in the previous story, what was the sin of Adam and Eve? They took a fruit, okay? So you can say their sin was, of course, disobedience. But it was their motivation for that disobedience. They wanted to be like God. They wanted to defy their nature. They wanted to defy the order of creation. What's happening here in Genesis 4? Cain is killing God's creation. He's killing God's creation. All humans are made in the image of God. And he's essentially assaulting that image. He is assaulting God by killing what it is that God favors. Sin is getting worse here. And will continue to escalate. Because what happens after Genesis 4 story? You have the Noah's Ark story. Uh, Noah's Ark is Genesis 6 to 9. And what you see in Genesis 6 is that all humanity is now wicked. All humanity is now corrupt in sin, and God says it's time to do a reboot. It's time to start over, drown these people, and start again. We go from the original sin of Adam and Eve to a personal sin of Cain. And it's going to escalate into a third category of sin that we call social sin. Sin is escalating. 